All right, now it's working. Okay, so today we are working on chapter four. We're moving along here. Even if you don't want to, I'm dragging you with me. Okay, so let's, no, let's open up this first. Close that. Nope, give me a sec here. Uh, share screen, and this is the one I want. Share, okay. So actually, I think this is a pretty, this is actually, a, a, um, some of the lessons aren't balanced in length, right? Because sometimes there's more concepts to cover. This is actually a pretty fast one in that we're only doing four, one to four, three, uh, but the concepts are really important. So we'll probably get through the PowerPoint pretty quick, but then I'll give you a little more time to work on some of the questions because we're gonna talk about prime numbers, uh, GCDs and LCMs, which uh, if, you, if you haven't printed off assignment number two, there's a stack of those questions on there. For instance, the first question on assignment number two is find the GCD, which you'll be able to do today. The prime factorization, you'll be able to do that today. LCMs. So you should be able to do, just looking at through these, you should be able to do a bulk of these questions right away. So if you have it printed off, keep it beside you because you might be able to look at it right away and do those questions pretty quick. And assignment number due, assignment number two, not assignment number due, assignment number two is due on this Thursday. Now I changed the dates, I changed the times because some people were having a little trouble getting it at the beginning of class. So I set it to the end of class because I'll still, I can still print it off at the end of class. That's not a big deal. So for instance, uh, Lori, 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 you have a question, Lori? Yeah, I know. Um, this chapter four that you're working on, is that chapter four in the textbook too? Yeah, everything's chapter four. Yeah, chapter four in the, in the textbook. Um, here, let me just... Let me hang on. I'll tell you what page it's on and everything. Chapter four, number three, 183 is the, where we start. Divisib divisibility for natural numbers, test for divisibility, and GCDs and LCM. Yeah, everything corresponds to the, uh, to the textbook. So let's say I cover something in class and I just kind of cover it really quickly. If you want a little more in depth, grab your textbook. Right, it's there, it's actually really, that's where all this stuff comes from. So you can go there and it'll give you a little more in depth. It'll give you more, a few more examples. It'll give you a few more questions. So feel free to use your textbook. It's a good resource. The, the, the reason we can't cover, so, uh, cover a lot of stuff so in depth is just because of the time frame of the course. We only have six weeks. And like I said, this course would normally be a 12 week course. <laughs> Same amount of time per day, but 12 weeks. So. Okay, oh yeah, sorry, I was talking about, uh, here, let me share a screen. Uh, I need this one, I don't want that one, I wanna back up. Close this, this is what I want, share screen. So if you look right at the top, if you haven't printed it off yet, right? Contemporary math assignment two, right there. So if you click on that, right? You can print off the assignment, right? You can do whatever you want. This one I think is, this one's 30 marks. It just happened to be that way. I guess I would add a few more questions. It's not a big deal. They're all about the same. Uh, it is due Thursday at 8 p.m. So then I moved it to the end of class. So that should give you more than enough time to do it. And that way I can mark it on Friday and get it back to you right away. Because we actually, next week, guess what's coming next week? Midterm. Yay. Midterm. Now, if you look on the 9th, which is the Monday, that's not the midterm, there's a review. Hey. If you click on this, I'm actually included a review in here. So it's a PDF and it's got, uh, I don't even, let's see how many questions it's got. It's probably got a lot. It's got like 84 questions and I've also included an answer key, right? So on the weekend, you can start working on your midterm. So during that class on Monday, we're going to spend two and a half hours working on the midterm review. So if you have questions, that's a great time. And then the midterm, is on the Tuesday. And we'll do it just like uh, Zipgrade. You log in, 50 questions again, so at about the same amount of time. But the difference is this is chapters one through six, whereas that last test we did yesterday was only one through three. Okay. 
but 50 questions you should most people most people got through it quite easily like time wise a lot of you spent like way a little extra time kind of reviewing stuff but that's fine too so i got no issues with that okay so there's we can see the breakdown this is what you need to look at if you're unsure of where we're going six seven day eight everything's by days with dates attached to it uh who had a question here Oh, Sam, what's coming next week? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I just told you. Okay. I guess I should have read that before. <laughs> okay. So let's stop sharing this and let's get on to this guy. Uh, share a screen. This one here. Okay. Now, let's talk about numbers. Let me get the right sheet here. This is what I want. Okay. So what makes a natural number? What is a natural number? Well, let me get the slideshow going here. Here's the deal. And this the, we've kind of seen this before in one of the earlier ones. So if A and B are whole numbers, you got to remember what whole numbers are. Whole numbers are all, no decimals, no fractions right now. Whole numbers are all numbers that include zero. Okay. Right. Natural numbers don't include zero. Whole numbers are zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay. So what we got is we got a couple of rules. If A and B are whole numbers, right? What happens is if we multiply any of those by another number, it's still a whole number. So for instance, if you have this one and this one are whole numbers, and I take that number and times it by another number, it doesn't change it, right? Here's the kind of the main thing, A equals B, Q. So what we're saying here is B divides evenly by A. So this is, the, remember we talked about algebra. For instance, if I gave you 20 equals 5A. So think about that, 20 equals 5A. If I devote, divide both sides by five, right, and I get four, right, I still end up with my lovely whole number. Okay, now, when we talk about numbers, we got to talk about factors. And factors are basically numbers, there they are, two numbers, that when you multiply, you get that number. So, for instance, does 10 have factors? Number 10. Yeah, it's got one and 10, that works, and it also has two and five, right? All of those numbers, one, two, five, and 10 are factors of 10. Um, seven, does seven have factors? Is seven, what are seven? What are the only factors of seven? One seven. and seven. Oh, that's easy because there's only two factors. Sorry, I should have chat up on there there. Uh, what was asking? Oh, Alice, no, yeah, yeah, you weren't on when I talked about it. For those that joined us afterwards, uh, I have to do marks on a spreadsheet. So I was waiting to get the next assignment in, which is on Thursday, and then I'll post them. And then all you got to do is email me and I'll email you back your mark. And I'll keep doing that for as long as you want to be updated. Okay. Oh, like I said to everybody, everybody, everybody passed the test. Nobody failed the test at all. So in case you were worried about that, if you failed the test, that didn't happen. Sorry, just a side note there. Um, Oh, okay, because then we can also talk about multiples. So one of the things is, for instance, let's say the term three. Three has multiples, and we're going to talk about this in 4.3. It's coming up. But all you do for multiples is you go three times one, three times two, three times three, three times four, three times five. That's all multiples are. And you can do that with any numbers. Okay, so this is, this divides factors, division, and multiple is just it's just background one. It's just background uh, information. Okay, so let's talk about next. Oops, next page here. Um, a whole number is even, and this is the actual. This is the actual technical definition of a whole number. A whole number is even when it's divisible by two. Kind of weird, eh? You never think of it that way. So any number that can be divisible by two is a whole number, an even number. Sorry. So like eight is eight divisible by two. Yeah, you get four. So it's an even number. Uh, 17. Can 17 divide by two? Of course, you can divide it by two, but I'm talking about you get a nice answer. 17 is not an even number. 
Now, an odd number, as you can look here, is um, it's not even, it's called, any, well, anyways, you look at it, if it's not even, it's called an odd number, which is two times whatever it is plus one. So for instance, two times seven, 14 plus one is 15. 15 is an odd number because this, the other one is even. Well, not, well seven is not even, sorry. Uh, any number plus one is an odd. So the key thing here is your even number if it's divisible by two. Okay. Now, moving on, we got to talk about the next one is prime numbers. And if we, did we, talk, we talked about this last week, I think, right? Prime numbers, yeah? Prime numbers is anything divisible by, it, it, by itself and one. So it only has two factors. Remember, factors are two numbers. When multiplied, you get the number. So a prime number is exactly uh, divisible by itself and one. It's called a prime number. So for example, three. Is three a prime number? Yeah. Oh, well, hey, what about two? Oh, yeah, two is a prime number. Three is a prime number. Now. What if it's not? It's called a composite. So for instance, four. Four is divisible by four and one, but it's also divisible by two and two. So it has more than those two things. So it's called a composite, right? And if anybody's ever played hockey, a composite stick is a combination of two materials or a compound in science, more than two materials. Well, it's the same thing with this. If you have more than the two factors, you have a composite. Now, the only exception to the rule, the only exception is the number one. It's called a unit. It's neither prime nor composite. Okay. Now, we're going to, after we do the lesson, and after we do a bit of work, there's a couple activities that I'm going to get you to do that are, well, and they're going to work on prime numbers. And it's a prime number maze. And you got to go through the maze by circling all the prime numbers. Okay, so prime numbers, only divisible by itself and one. Composite, a combination of more than two factors. And one is not a prime or a composite, it's called a unit. Okay, now, here's the deal, and this is really important in learning how to talk about LCMs and LCDs and GCDs, I know these acronyms, you probably remember. We'll go, if you don't remember, we're gonna go over them. Every, well, it's, here, I'll, let, let me explain. It's called the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. It's called the simple product form. And basically what it states is any number can be expressed as a whole bunch of prime numbers, okay? And we'll do an example here and we'll do a couple if it need be. So any number, you pick any number, you can break it down to the product right, because they're factors, so we're talking about product multiplied of prime numbers, okay? Um, this is why we do, oh, who cares about this? This is why we do not think of one as either prime or composite, because it's, it's unique. We'll do an example on the next page. This will make, this will make, hopefully this makes sense. If it doesn't, you got to let me know and I'll do another example. Okay. You know what, let's start with something easier than 600, honestly. Give me a sec. I'm going to stop sharing. Give me one sec. I'm going to switch to my board. Uh, I need this. Share screen. I need that. Share. Yeah, you can see my whiteboard. Okay. Okay. So, for instance, let's say I give you 10. Hang on. Oh, great. This pen's dead. Give me a sec. Sorry. I need another pen. Ugh. I have battery controlled pens and they sometimes die. There we go. Okay. So, for instance, if I give you 10, that's too thick. Okay. I want to break this down into factors. So somebody give me two factors that they think work for 10. Two and five. Okay. I was hoping somebody would say one and 10 just so I could fix. So somebody say, say that again, but just say one and 10 for me. One and 10. Okay. So let's say you pick one and 10. Well, the thing was, is remember what we just said, you can't use ones here because it's a unique number, right? So don't do the obvious ones like one and 10. Okay. So let's try something else. So what did you say? 
Two and five. Okay, now here's the deal. Is two a prime number? Yes. Yes, it is. Is five a prime number? Yes. So what we've done is I've taken 10 and I've broken down to its prime factors. Okay. Let me put another one beside it. Let's try 20. Okay. Break it down 10 and uh, break down, sorry, 20 for me, somebody. Five and four. So five and four. Okay. Now here's the deal. Is five a prime number? Yes. What about four? No. What can four now break down into? Two and two. Two and two. So what we've done is we've created a prime factorization tree. Because if you look at this, when I take the five times the two times the two, do I end up back with my 20? Yeah, I do, right? So that's I've taken 20 and I've broken down into its prime numbers. Okay, uh, let's do something a little bigger. Um, it's two is prime number. Two, yeah, two is a prime number because it's only divisible by itself and it one. That's it. So back there, prime two is a prime number. So let's try. <clears throat> uh, let's try eighty. Let's try something bigger. Okay. Who wants somebody? Anybody can do this for me. Go ahead. 40 times two. Sorry, what was that? 40 times two? Okay. Now, two, two is a prime number. What, what about 40? No. Let's break 40 down again then. 10 times two. Oh, no. 20, sorry, what'd you say? 20 times two? Yes. So 20 times two. Two is fine. Let's break the 20 down. Five times four. Sorry, what was that? Five times four. Five times four, thank you. Well, five's a prime, so, but we can break the four down into? Two times two. Two and two, oops, two and two. Two and two. And you can see, and basically if you wanna check, go back and look at everything. So I got my two up the top there, times my two there, times my five, times my two, times my two. Do we end up with back at the right amount? Yeah. You can actually even shorten this up. How many twos do I have here? Four. So I can write it actually like this if I wanted to also, right? Two to the four, which means two times two times two times two, and then times five, okay? So the main, the main thing there is you're looking at breaking it down into primes. Okay, so now let's do the example that they give us in the notes here. Uh, stop sharing here for a sec. Stop sharing. Open this back up. This one. Oh, where's my share screen? There it is. Okay, so we're going to try 600. Oh boy, this is a big one. But again, so here's the deal you're doing this, there's going to be many ways to get to the final product. Some of you could look at 600, right? And break it down into 30 and 20. Some of you might break it down to six and 100. Some of you might break it down to two and 300. Will you end up with the fine? Will you all end up at the same place? Yeah, you will, no matter how you do it. So this one, so oops, this one, factor tree, you can break it down this way, 30 and 20. The 30 breaks down to 15 and two, 15 breaks down to three and five. On the other side, 20 breaks down to two and 10 and then two and five. Like I said, there's multiple ways to do that. You could do it completely different if you wanted to. You could break it down to two and 300 and then work the 300 side and keep doing it that way. You can also use what's called short division. And this is kind of cool. But basically what short division is, is just division in your head. So short division, you would take the, see the T start at the bottom. You try two, right? Two goes into 600, 300 times, right? So 300. And then you could go three to 300, goes into a hundred times. And then two into a hundred, 50. Two into 50, 25. And then five into 25 is five. And if you look, five, five, two, two, three, two, it's the same as doing it at the factor tree. It's called short division, but you work up instead of down. 
So why do we do this? It's always everybody's question. Well, what it is, is when you're talking about it, you're trying to represent it. Well, see, there's the breakdown. Two times two times two times three times five times five. You want to represent it as what's called prime factorization. And the reason we do this is we can then use prime factorization to figure out things like greatest common divisor or least common multiple. You'll see there's a reason for this, but it's coming in 4.3. We're going to do 4.2 next. So if we look at this, any natural number is, it can be expressed as the product of powers. So what it looks like, the 600 could be re represented as two times two times two times three times five times five, or we can shorten it up. There's three twos, so you go two to the three. There's one three, so three to the one, and there's two fives, so five to the two, right? So we can take that long two times two times two times three times five and, oh, sorry, and the other five and break it down to something shorter. That is called prime power representation, okay? And, and don't stress, when I give you the, the questions to do, like the activity, not the activity, the questions to do at the end of this one, you're gonna have to do some prime factorization so you get good at it. And the activities at the end, we're gonna do some prime factorizations also. Okay, next one, 4.2. Tests for divisibility. Okay, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice, please listen. When you're doing tests for divisibility, I do not expect you to memorize these. Because when you do your assignment or when you do your test, will you have a calculator with you? Can you test all of these with a calculator? The reason for these tests for divisibility is just to basically speed up your math ability. That's all it is. It's like learning new words that when you come across them in a book, you'll, you'll understand what they mean. So these tests for divisibility, and there is, hang on, let me count here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight. Okay, there's like eight different tests for divisibility. I don't expect you to memorize them. I guarantee you know half of these already. So let's take a look at these. Okay. Here's an interesting concept. If you have three numbers and A, the first number is divisible by D and the second number B is divisible by D, here's something really cool. If you take A and B and add them together, or you take A and B and subtract them, both those results will have to be divisible by the original number D. It's kind of cool. It actually works. So let's do an example here. Next one. Uh, where is it here? So 36 and 15. 36 and 15 are both divisible by 3, right? 36 divided by 3 is 12. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So here's the neat thing. If you take 36 and 15, you get your 51. If you take 36 minus 15 and get your 21, both those answers have to be divisible by 3. Is that a surprise to anybody at all? I know when me teaching it was a surprise to me. Most people don't see those patterns right away. Now, again, do I expect you to memorize that? Is that useful information? So when you're teaching middle years and you're teaching early years and middle years and you're helping the kids work, about, work on divisibility, which is one of the hardest things to do, you can talk about all these different... What was that? <laughs> you can talk about all those different rules and they will help you and they will help those kids. Okay. Okay. How do you know if a number is divisible by two? If it what does ends it end with? with an even number. Yeah, it ends with oh, it ends with an even number, correct. So anything that ends with a zero, two, four, six, or eight, it's divisible by two. Now, did most of you know that? Yeah, it's one of the most common ones you know, right? But for when you're teaching early and middle years, some of those kids might not know it. So that would help them. That also is useful when you're trying to, when you have to teach fractions and you have to reduce fractions, that's a really useful thing. Hey. 
You know a number is divisible by five when it ends with either zero or five. Yeah? You guys know that one too, right? Yeah. Most of the, yeah. Most of most of you will know these ones. Wait till we get to the ones coming up. Some of you are like, uh, you'll be like, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, okay, yeah, I see that, Kyle. I see you having trouble there. Okay. Um, divisible by 10. Oops. How do you know if it's divisible by 10? It has to end in a zero. So like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, uh, 5,287,330 is divisible by 10, right? Because it ends in a zero. Okay. Next ones. And like I said, you don't have to memorize these, but they're you because you can always just use your calculator. You take a number, and if it asks, is this number divisible by seven? You just go divided by seven. If you don't have a remainder, you know it's divisible by seven. Uh, next one, divisible by four. A number is divisible by four if the last two digits are divisible by four. So for instance, if it ended with a 16, whatever it happens to be, 2,716. Because 16 is divisible by four, that whole number is divisible by four. Okay. A natural number is divisible by eight when the number represented by its last three digits is, okay, that, that's stupid. How many of you are gonna know if the last three digits of a number are divisible by eight? Okay, uh, 800, like, so let's say you say 5,856. Is 856 divisible by eight? I don't know, it would just be easier to grab your calculator and do the whole number, wouldn't it? It yeah? is. It is. Oh, it is? Okay, I just made it up. Okay. <laughs> but, but that's a rule. If the last three division, digits are divisible by eight, whatever the number is size-wise, it's divisible by eight. So, oh, here we go. So here's the question. Is 81,164 divisible by four and by eight? Okay, so what was the test for four? Last two digits. Is 64 divisible by four? Yeah. So we know right away, yeah, 64 is divisible by four. So then that whole number is divisible by four. What about by eight? Uh, 164, is 164 divisible by eight? Well, no, eight goes into 16 twice, but then doesn't go into four. So you know right away it's not divisible by, by eight. Now, would it have just have been e as easy to grab a calculator and do that? Yeah. Okay. Kyle, can you hear me at all? I know you're standing there. I know you're having technical. Can you, you can still hear me? Thumbs up? Yeah. Yes, I could hear you. Okay, no problem. If you have to run in and out, just let, that's fine. I got no worries about that, so. Okay, uh, what about three? When is a number divisible by three? This is kind of cool. A number is divisible by three if the sum of its digits is divisible by three. So you take the number, add them all together. And if that number is divisible by three, then the whole thing is divisible by three. Some of, some of these concepts will be like, you'll be like, I've never heard of that before. Some of you might know these and some of you might, this might be really new. Not a big deal. Uh, a number is divisible by nine, if and only if the sum of its digits are divisible by nine. So you add them all up. We're gonna do an example, I think right away. You ever do an example right away? If you add up all the numbers and it's divisible by nine, then the whole thing is divisible by nine. So let's take a look at one here. 81,165. Okay, it's ridiculous. Some of these numbers are just ridiculous. So what you do is you add them up. Eight plus one is nine, plus one is 10, plus six is 16, plus five is 21. Is 21 divisible by three? Yes. It is. So then that number is divisible by three. Now, is 21 also divisible by nine? No. Nope. Nope. So then it's not divisible by nine, right? So 21, uh, sorry, go ahead. Would uh, the fact that uh, nine is the square of three have anything to do with uh, the rules still applying? <laughs> Actually, I don't know that. I've never been asked that. I don't know. Three, let's see, let me think about that. Well, no, you're not squaring into the numbers. You're just looking at the divisible, right? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think that's the only basis rule is just adding them up. I never even thought about the square that, well, of course, nine is the square of three, but. I just mean how uh, three and nine are related to one another. I don't think so, because, I mean, it's just a basic rule. There, there's no pattern there. If you think it, really, if you thought it was a square, then it would apply to both, that they should be both divisible, but I don't see it as that. 
Huh. Okay, now the next one. <laughs> this one you definitely don't have to memorize. Divisible by 11. This, this, it's kind of actually a stupid way of doing it. it it's some of the some of the stuff I show you is very interesting, I think, because it's math related. But some of it has no real purpose. Okay, look at this one. A number is divisible by eleven when the sum of its digits in the even and odd positions. So you got to take all the even number positions, got to take all the odd number positions, and add them up. And if that difference is divisible by eleven, then the whole number is divisible by eleven. Okay, wouldn't it be easier just, yeah. I'll show you an example. Uh, it would be easier just to divide by 11, so. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so we, what do we got here? 42,315,960, 690. Let me actually get the right number. So let's look at the even positions. So the even positions would be the two, the one, the six, and the zero, right? Add those up, you get nine. The odd positions would be the first four, then the three, then the five, then the nine, and you get 21. Then you subtract them. So 21 minus nine is 12. 12 is not divisible by 11. So that 42 million is not divisible by 11. Could you have done that quite a bit faster by actually going four, two, three, one, five, six, nine, zero divided by 11 equals? Yes. But it's, it's sometimes knowing knowing numbers and knowing about numbers. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen on the internet, it used to be on TV, these guys that could do all these immensely complicated math calculations in their head, yeah? Well, they would know all these rules. There is a ton of rules when it comes to math, and this is one of them. And like I said, I don't expect you to know that. Last one here, uh, 4.2, divisibility of products. Okay. So if A and B have no common divisor other than one, and when I say that, so for instance, A, B have no common divisor, like a two and a three. The only ones they have for divisors are one, so that doesn't work. Actually, here, let's look at the, look, let's look at the example. Eight and nine are both divisors of uh, 10,800, okay? So basically, 10,800, is it divisible at uh, eight? Yes. Is 10,800 divisible by nine? Yes. So both eight and nine are divisors of that big number. So then what happens is if you multiply those numbers together, eight times nine, you get 72. What that means about 72 is it's also a divisor of 10,800. It's called divisibility of products. It's kind of a neat way of doing math, right? So if you find two numbers that are anything, so let me give you an example. Um, 80, let's look at the number 80. Four and five are both divisors of 80, right? 80 divided by four, 80 divided by five, both works. Now take four and five and multiply them together, you get 20. So does that mean 20 is also a divisor of 80? Yeah, it's kind of a neat, it's a neat rule. Now, do, again, do I expect you to memorize that? No, do I expect you to know that? No, because could you use your calculator? Yes, but if you're gonna be a math teacher, hopefully you all are or teaching math at one point, you're going to have to know some of those rules because it'll help you to explain things to kids when you talk about division, which is really kind of cool. Sorry, um, go ahead. Yep. What does divisor mean? Does it mean division by? Yeah, divisor is something that you divide by. So like 20, a divisor would be four, right? 20, a divisor would also be five because you can divide it by those numbers. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, oh, that's a good point. If something comes across and you don't know the terminology, like divisor, right, please ask like you did. That's very helpful. Because I guarantee if you were going to ask that question, somebody else didn't know that either and they needed to ask, but they were just too shy. Hopefully you guys aren't too shy in my class. Okay, now, here we go. 4.3. This is the stuff. This is where we're going to do some math. We're gonna do GCDs and LCMs, right? We oft, you'll often have heard them say that way. Greatest common divisors and least common multiple. So greatest common divisor, you think about that, is the biggest number that you can divide something by. 
So if you have this number and this number, we want to find the biggest number that we can divide both of them by. It's called the greatest common divisor. This is the fancy way of writing it. D equals GCD of A and B. Okay. So what we're looking for is we're going back to Venn diagrams. Remember Venn's circle in a circle? We are looking for the one that's in the middle. So we're looking for, we're looking for 24 and that little symbol and 27. Okay, so how do you do this? I need to find the biggest number that can go into 24 and 27 that's big. There's gotta be a way to do it. Well, one of the ways, and this is probably the easiest way, list them off. So list all the factors of 24, okay? Factors of 24, you gotta remember this. I'm looking for two, I'm looking for numbers that when multiplied together, give you 24. Now, I'm gonna show you something. So you see how 24 is laid out? One, two, three, four, six, eight, 12, and 24. You see how it's laid out? I'm gonna show you something that I teach kids all the time. Um, so let me stop sharing this. Give me a sec. Let me open up my smart board here. And I'm going to show you something called the rainbow method. And some of you may have seen this. You may not have seen this. I always teach it. because I teach it this way because it makes a lot of sense. Well, to kids. Hang on. Share screen. That. Okay. Ugh. Okay. So what I do is I put my 24 in the center here. And I'm going to draw a rainbow. So I always start with the lowest value and the highest value. So you always start with whatever number you pick, you always start with one. So what are my factors? One and what do I put way over here? One times what gives us 24? 24. 24, perfect. So then what you do is you start working your way up. Okay, I'm gonna work my way up on the left-hand side. So the next number you would try is two. If two doesn't work, then you would try three. If three doesn't work, you would try four. But does two work in this case? Two and? One. Perfect. You see, I'm just, I'm creating my rainbow. Then my next one would be three and? Eight. Eight. Keep going up. Four and? Six. Six. Now, if you look, the only number that would be in the middle would be five and that doesn't work. So now, have I created all my factors now, right? One comma two comma three comma four comma six comma eight comma 12 comma 24, okay? Has, have any of you ever seen that rainbow before? You might've actually taught it that way. No, but it's excellent. It, well, it's, it, it's a good visual way and it's a good way to keep track of it without losing any numbers. Okay, now we could do the same thing for 27, right? So let's go back to, hang on, let's stop sharing this. Stop sharing, sorry. I keep having to flip back and forth, it's kind of annoying. Share, that one, share, okay. So then we can do 27. So 27 is one, three, nine, and 27. Quite a, quite a lot less factors. Now, here's the question. Do you see a number in the brackets, the, the listing of 24 and the listing of 27 that's common to both? Do you see a number? Which ones are they? There's two of them. One and three. One and three, okay. So then, okay, you find the intersection of those two sets. And if you remember, remember intersection, that's that little U symbol that we did with Venn diagrams. It's one and three. Here's the question though. We want the greatest common divisor. So what number are we gonna pick, the one or the three? Three. Yeah, we picked the three. So there's our GCD of 24 and 27 is three. Okay, now that's really easy to do it that way if you have small numbers like 16 and 24 or 15 and 30. What if I was to give you something like 200 and 755? Would that take a long time to do this question? Yes. Yeah, okay, so what we can do is we can do it a different way. And this is the way you probably will do it from now on. If you ever get stuck, you can always go back to this method. But the main way we do it is prime factorization method. Oh, I'm so glad we know how to prime factor. We did that already, remember the prime factor tree? Now we're gonna use it to figure out what GCD is, okay? 
So what we can do, and let's go right to the example. So, and here's the example. We got two big numbers here. Oh my goodness. We got 2,250 and 2,835. Oh boy. So can you imagine doing that the other way with the rainbow method? Oh, it'd be ridiculous. So instead we're gonna do prime factorization. Now I've already done it for you here, right? I see two, three to the two and five to the three. Let's go and do it. Let's go back to the smart board and do prime factorization of that just so we remember how to do it, okay? We'll come back to this in a sec. So let's go to close that. Smart board, share screen, this one here. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the one I want. Okay. So let's do prime factorization. Actually, I got to run to the washroom real quick. You're going to do the prime factorization. So 2250, and I want you to start breaking it down to its prime factor. much coffee okay so you want to do the 2250 for me somebody adventurous here two times one one two five or is this too big sorry you said two and one one two five yes that should that should work come on there we go okay so the two is fine what about um what is the one one two five breakdown into Oh, I thought five is a prime factor. What'd you say, five and? Did you, you say five? I thought that 1,125 is a prime factor. I did. No, no, it breaks down. You can see it ends in a five. So we, we know right away one of them is going to be a five because of the rules of divisibility, right? So that's going to be two, uh, two, two, five. Is that right? Is that right, guys? Do your math for me. It is 225. Okay, 225. It ends in a 5. We'll break down again to 5 and 45. Yes. Yeah. 45 breaks down into... 8 times 5. What would you say? 9 times 5. Oops, I need more page here. Hang on. Uh, 5 and 9. And 9 breaks down into... Three and three. So what do we get here? Two threes, three fives and a two. So we got this right. So two times three times three times five times five times five. 
Or if we shorten it up, two to the one times three to the two times five to the three. I think that's the answer they give us on the sheet, don't they? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's do the uh, let's do the next one there too. What was the other one? Two eight three five. Well, no, we don't need to do that. You've already practiced that enough. You can do that on your own. But I want to show you something that's kind of interesting. And this is this is something you got to have. Everything has to match. All right. So that's where that's where we get that breakdown. So I'll stop sharing this. Put this back up. Share again. Share screen. There we go. Okay. So two two five zero breaks down to two three squared and five to the three. And 2,835 breaks down to three to the four times five times seven. Now, what has to happen is you need to rewrite the numbers so you have everything. And this will make sense in the next one. So if you look, you see how 2250 has a two in it and 2835 doesn't have a two in it. Well, we have to have twos in both. So the rule is, oops, the rule is if I have a two here, look here, see how I have two to the one? I need to have a two in the second one. But to do it so it doesn't make any difference, I made it two to the zero. Now, if you remember, anything to the zero exponent is equal to? Zero. No. Or one, sorry. It's one. Anything to the zero is equal to one. I think we did that a while back. So the key here is, right, everything has to balance up. So if you have a two here, you got to have a two here. If you have a three here, you got to have a three here. If you got a five here, you have to have a five here. Now, if you notice, the second number has a seven. Oh, so do we need a seven in the first number? Yes, of course we do. So we have a seven to the zero because anything times one doesn't change, right? Hey, so Brian. Yeah, Sam. Um, sorry to interrupt there, but are these uh, all these methods here? Do you have them all in the book, or do I have them where? Like all, all these uh, prime factorization methods and the things you told us in the beginning there, are they all in the book in this chapter or no? Oh yeah, everything everything we do is in the book. Every, Wait, okay. every, every slide, every example, everything we do is all in the book. But what the book does is they just do it in, so for instance, they might take this one concept and do it over five or six examples, right? They just stretch it out more. We don't have time to do it all, so that's why we have to shorten it down a bit. But if you want extra practice, Bang, go right to the book. And here, I'll even tell you this one. Give me a sec here. Just, just so you can kind of see where we are in the book. Uh, 4.3. Give me a sec, give me a sec. Uh, yeah, page 206, 207, and 208. You'll see it's all that stuff we're covered is all in that spot there. So if you need extra practice, you can take a look at that. Okay. So here's the deal. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Whoever's asking. Why do we have to rewrite them? You'll see in a sec. Give me one sec. <laughs> now, when you want to find the greatest common denominator divisor, if you've rewritten them in this form, what you look for is you look for the smallest one of each. So for instance, I have a two to the one and I have a two to the zero. Which one's the smallest? Two to the zero. So that's the one I'm going to use. I have a three to the two and a three to the four. Which one's the smallest? Three to the two. Three to the two. Five to the three and five to the one. Which one's the smallest? Five to the one. And seven to the zero and seven to the one. Which one's the smallest? Seven, seven to the so that's why we need those numbers there. So when we want to look for the greatest common divisor, we use the smallest one, two to the zero, three to the two, five to the one, seven to the zero. Now, here's the deal. Two to the zero and seven to the zero are just one. We don't care. They don't change it. Three to the two is nine. Five to the one is five. So our greatest common divisor, the biggest number that we'll be able to take both those numbers and divide by is 45, right? So do you, see, do you see now why we have to write them out? So then we can pick them? I still don't understand where the two to the zero comes from. Well, if you look back up here at 2,835, 
There's a three to the four, a five and a seven. We need everything to balance. So if there's a two in one of them, there has to be a two in the other one. Just like there's a seven in the right-hand one, but we need to put a seven in the left-hand one. Okay. And, to, and to do that without making it different, we just make it to us uh, whatever it is to the zero. Okay. So this is how you cut now. On the assignment, you're going to have to do a couple of these. Are we going to do a couple of, we're going to do some of these in the, um, the questions at the end of this unit? Yeah. So, but keep that in mind. What you might want to write there on the side, use the smallest one, if that makes sense to you, right? So of the two to the one and the two to the zero, use the smallest one. Of the three to the two and the three to the four, use the smallest one. Okay. Now, <laughs> that's for GCD. Now we're gonna talk about LCMs. LCM are multiples. And when I say multiples, I'm taking about, you pick a number like so seven, seven times one, seven times two, seven times three, seven times four, those are multiples. What I wanna find is the least common one between two numbers. So let's do an example, and then I'll show you the faster way to do it, which is the prime factorization. Okay, so here we go. I have nine and I have 15. I wanna find the least common multiple. I wanna find the ones that's the same, not a divisor, but a multiple of both nine and 15. So what we can do is we can list them off. So here's nine, right? Nine times one is nine. Nine times two is 18. Nine times three is 27. Nine times four is 36 and so on. Could we keep going? Yes. And that's what the dot, dot, dot at the end means. Let's find the same thing for 15. So 15. 15 times one is 15, 15 times two is 30, 15 times three is 45, uh, 15 times uh, four is uh, 60, and dot, dot, dot. Now, if you look, do you see one right away that's a multiple, that's the same number in both? 45. 45. And actually, if we kept going on this bottom one, the next one would be what, 75 and then 90. We could actually get, you know, 45 and 90. So. We could find the intersection of those points, 45 and 90, but we're looking for which one, the greatest one or the least one? Least. The least, so what's our number? It's gonna be 45, okay? Now, this method works, but if the problem is, is when you get really, really big numbers, it's, it's just a pain in the butt to do. So we are gonna do it the other way, which is prime factorization, okay? And I'll show you, we're gonna use the same numbers as we used before but we're gonna do something different, okay? All okay, right, so here we go. So our LCM, right, is 45. Now, where LCM is useful is when, you're, when we're dealing with fractions, you gotta find common denominators. That's where that's coming from. So what we're gonna do is to find the LCM, we wanna prime factorize our numbers, the same as before. That's all that said is prime factorization. So here we go. Now, do those numbers look familiar? 2250, we did that already, didn't we? Prime factorization, yeah. And then we did 2835 and we prime factorization. Now, are we missing things from either one? Yeah, the 2250, we're missing a seven, aren't we? Yeah, and the 2835, we're missing a two, aren't they? Aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So do we need to, when we list them again, do we need to add those ones in? Yeah. Yeah, so here we go. Oops, sorry. Oops. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. There we go. So you rewrite them again. Two to the zero, three to the two, five to the three. Oh, seven to the zero, because we didn't have that one. Then we do the same thing for two, eight, three, five. Two to the zero, two we were missing. So two to the zero, three to the four, five to the one, seven to the one. Now, here's the difference. When we were looking for greatest common divisor, we were looking for the smallest one, weren't we? Yeah? Yeah. Well, LCMs, we're going to look for the biggest. The biggest. Right. So that's why you're going to have to know that for the test, right? Because those are questions I'm going to ask you. Do GCD, do LCM. They're the same thing, prime factorization. You just got to remember, greatest common divisor, small. LCM, big. Greatest common divisor, small. LCM, big. Okay, so we have a two to the one and a two to the zero. What are we going to use? for LCMs? Two to the one. Two to the one, because it's the bigger. Three to the two and three to the four. Which one are we gonna use? 
Three to the four. Three to the four. Five to the three or five to the one? Five to the three. And seven to the zero or seven to the one? Seven to the one. Okay, good. So there's our list. So we write, write about two to the one, three to the four, five to the three, seven to the one. Okay, whoa, big number. So it's so think about this for a sec. If you took 22, uh, 2,250 times it by one, put the number, then times it by two and put the number, and times it by three and put the number, and times it by four and put the number, you'd have a massive list and you'd have to do the same for the 2835. Then that's where they cross over 141,750. Yikes. Can you imagine doing it that other way? No, this is a much faster method. Okay, now, so let's just, let's overview this again for the two of them. I wanna make sure this is clear. You take the number and you prime factor it, which means all the numbers, all the factors have to be prime numbers. And you can do that any way you want, right? You could do it, well, how did we do it? We did it with, hang on. We did it with this, uh, share screen, sorry. Oh my goodness, come on, right? That's how we did it here. That's a prime factorization tree, right? And don't stress, we're gonna practice this, okay? So you prime factor it. Then what you wanna do is, sorry, let me share a screen again. I'm not fast enough to do this. <laughs> right, so then you prime factor this. And then if you're looking for if you're looking for GCD, oh, sorry, then you got to fill in all the gaps. If there's any missing on either side, fill them in with zeros, something to the zero. Then greatest common divisor, you're looking for the lowest possible values. LCMs, you're looking for the greatest common value or biggest values. Is that, is that clear, that rule? Are you going to remember it? Yeah. Are you going to have to remember it? Yes. So GCDs, lowest. LCMs, greatest. If I say it enough time, you'll just, it'll just pound into your head eventually. Now, as we practice more, will this make sense? Yeah. And can you ask questions? Yeah. And like, for instance, even if you look at the assignment, assignment number two, question number, uh, question number first one is find the GCD of six, eight, uh, six, 10 and 18. So you're gonna prime factorize each, fill in all the holes, look for the lowest. LCMs, 48, 162, 27. Prime factor, fill in the holes, look for the greatest. Okay, now it is, what time is it? It is 25 after. Uh, do you wanna do some questions first and then take a break or do you wanna break now? Break now, thumbs up. We'll do a break. break, let's do a break then, okay. Since nobody answers, well, whoever made the decision gets. So come back at... All right. <laughs> Come back when? What'd you say? I said, all right. Okay, break now. Yeah, I know some of you got it. Uh, come back at 20, 22. Now, if you're not going to take a break and want to do 20, 20, yeah, 22. So what's that? Just over 15 minutes. If you want to stay, can you start these questions? Kyle, are you okay? Because you just said spaghetti. Jeez. Oh, oh <laughs> okay, everybody wants a break. He's having spaghetti. Okay, here we go. So come back at 22. If you want to stay, do some of these questions. Hey, if you want to start the assignment, you can start that too. And I need some water because I've been talking way too much. Uh, I should double check to make sure. Who was I missing for attendance? Brian. Yes, Heather. Can I just send you mine now, my assignment today? Did you finish it already? Yeah. Well, by all means, send it. I don't care. Woo! <laughs> just so I don't misplace it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, just, yeah, yours, I think when you did it with Genius Scan last, most people actually, I think probably about 90% of you had no issues with Genius Scan. A few had issues, but we can figure that out this week. Yeah, send it. Go ahead. Go ahead I had and send to laugh because my Mother's Day, I sat there at the table and I looked at it and then I was like, 
hey, some of this is like coming back to me. And then I just kept doing it and doing it. And I'm, I'm sure Bernice was really happy that you were doing that. Well, she was getting me to go run around and try and get her some takeout. And I was like, hold on, I'm busy at the moment. <laughs> Good, you told her. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, you can send it to me. No problem. I'll mark it probably tomorrow then and send it back to you. Okay. Uh, the only one I think we're still missing. Did Lori Martin ever show up? Lori, are you here? I'm here. There you are. There you go. Sorry, when I did attendance, I missed you. Now I got you. Perfect. There we go. Thanks, Lori. Okay. Yeah, take your break or do some questions or do the assignment too. You decide. I'm going to grab a drink of water. I mean, I wish I could be like, who was it that asked yesterday to have a drink? Was that Kyle? Who was that yesterday? <laughs> Brian, it was a math problem. Okay. A subtraction problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> You wanted to subtract some brain cells, right? Is that what it was? Yeah, you know, the exponent could have been inebriation. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I'm going to grab yeah, some. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab some water.
not our array diagrams. It's um, why are why are they called like this? Sorry, what was that, Alice? Array diagrams for question the... one. Are you talking about in the book? Yes. Hang on. Oh, do you remember arrays? That's when you take 36 and you break it up into, um, you break it up to four groups of nine. Yeah, um, right, remember, that's all that array. You don't have to, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I mean, how would you normally do that? Well, you would just go 36 divided by four is nine. You could actually just prove it that way. That's fine too. Everybody's here except for Myrna Janai and Darren Musso, but I think I don't think they're showing up. So, <laughs> can I figure that? What does it mean by positive and multiples? Just that Sorry. is the negative. Sorry, which one? Three A. It says positive and multiples. Just, just the ones that are negative. I got this, but I don't know why it means, why it means positive. Are you talking about question two? No. Three. Oh, three. Sorry. Oh, multiples. Okay, so what you're doing, multiples of eight. The first one is eight, right? Because that's eight times one. The second one is eight times two, so you'd put 16. And then eight times three, right? You put 24. And then eight times four, you put 32. It just wants to know the multiples. Like if you're times by one, times by two, times by three. And just do that. 10 times. Why does it call positive or is it just a term? Because we're not dealing with negatives at all when we call multiples, right? You wouldn't have negative, you wouldn't go the other way. Well, you could go the other way, right? Times it by zero and then times it by negative one and then then negative two, negative three. But we just want the positive one starting with one. So just one through 10. Oh, um, anybody that didn't get their book yet this week, I think there might have been one or two of you. I put these pages, uh, same with you, Lacey. I put the pages on the, um, on the website, like PDFs of those pages, so you can actually follow the exact same questions we are, if you want. And if you can't find them here, I'll show you where they are. Oops, let's do this. This one here, share screen. Uh, if you look right here on day six, right? Day, day six right there. Sorry, I need to move that screen out of the way. There we go. Uh, right there are the questions. So I just did genius scan. I just did them real quick and threw them in there. And then all the pages are there. You can see. Just if you want the, the same stuff we're working on.
Brian. Yes. I don't know how to do question five. It's maybe a large question, but I still I don't understand. Okay, so let's say you have the number 63, right? 63 has two odd numbers, seven and nine, right? As products, right? So here's the deal. Should both those factors be odd? Yeah, seven and nine are both odd. And when you multiply them together, you get an odd answer. That's all it's asking. Okay. Oh, except they wanted you to use what four point? Oh, that yeah, that's any of the stuff we did in four point one. Yeah, so you could pick any numbers. I mean, you could just represent it. Yeah, seven and nine are both odd, and when you multiply seven and nine, you get sixty three, and that's odd also. You can do it that way if you want. Did you say prime factorization would be on the test? Prime factorization? Yes. Well, here, let me explain. Let me, give me a second. Ooh. That's the review. Give me one sec here. I'm just looking something up. There, there's no, there's no question exactly on prime factorization, but what I do ask you is, here's, here's. Some well, for instance, look look at have you looked at the assignment yet? No. The first two questions on the assignment is find the GCD and find the LCM. Right? The easiest way to do both of those is to prime factorize them. So I don't specifically ask for prime factorization on the midterm coming up, but I do ask you what a GCD and an LCM are of these numbers. So you should know how to do it because it's just the easy way to do it. I just forgot the first step. About prime, prime, prime factorization here. Let me throw one up. Give me, give me the number and I'll show you here. Let me stop. Give me a sec. Uh, 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 oops. Come on, mouse. Mouse is not working properly. Oh, that's that. Share screen. Share. So what's the number you want to do? One thirty six and one oh two. 36, you said? 136. 136. Okay, so let's look at 136. Okay, so what we're going to try to do is we want to break this into its prime factorization. So one of the methods I use all the time is I always start with two. I always start with the smallest prime number. Now, we know right away that 136 is divisible by two because it's, the 136 ends in an, it's an even number, right? So we know it's two and, uh, what is it, 6, 18, 68, is that right? Yes. Okay, so then the two I already know. Two is prime factored already. So then we're going to take the 68 and we're going to break it down. So the first number we always try, and then if it doesn't work, we go to the next one up. We're going to try a two. Now we know two goes into 68 because 68 is an even number. So two and? 34. 34. See, we're working our way through. So now 34, we're going to break down. 
And we know two also works because it's an even number. So we end up with what, 17. Okay, now 17, here's the kicker. You try two, no, two doesn't go into it. Then you try three, no, three doesn't go into it. Then I try five, and the numbers that I'm trying are prime numbers. So five doesn't work. Now, what do we know? What, so what do we know about 17 right away? What's 17? 17 doesn't work. It's a prime number, right? So 17, we can stop. So if you think about this, our numbers here, and we can just go back and circle them if you want. There's one, there's one, there's one, and there's one. Those are all my prime numbers. So two times two times two times 17, or if we want to shorten up two to the three times 17, that's prime factorization. Does that make a little more sense? Yes, I just forgot the first step. Yeah, you just, you just got to always, always start with two. And then if two doesn't work, then try three. And if three doesn't work, try five, right? I think most people are back. We're just working on, and I'll put them back up again, the questions. Wow, you have the notes too. I mean, you can you can click on the web page and get the, the questions that you have to do anyway. So but I can put them back up. Stop sharing that. Those ones there. All right. When I factored 102, I got 2, 3, and 7. Was I right? For, which num for what number? 102. 102? Let me double check here. So it'll be 2 and 51. And then 51 breaks down to 3 and 7. So 2, 3, and 7. Yeah, 2, 3, and 7. I don't like all these screens. I don't get to see your faces like I did yesterday. That was really, that was nice yesterday, by the way. I know you didn't think it was nice because you guys had to do a test, but it was nice actually being able to see everybody's face. Kind of boring when I have to look at blank screen. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Jeez. And I'm eating a sandwich. Oh, okay, you don't, no, you don't have it on if you're eating a sandwich. That's fine. But it is quite nice, you know, being able to see everybody. It's, it, I hate to say it, but sometimes it doesn't feel like a class. Because I'm sitting here with a camera, and I, that's all I see is this is what I see, by the way. Here, uh, let's see if I can turn this around for you guys. Give me this for a second. That's what I see on my screen, right? Just a bunch of dots. Like, so it's not that exciting. It was more fun yesterday with everybody on. Even if we had stressed expressions. Alice, you just made me laugh yesterday. That was so funny. I, you were concentrating so hard on that question. And you were just, you looked so frustrated. You were like. Good. It was a good one. Oh, you're muted. I was trying to think of distributive property and community property. You, you were right. It was distributive property. Oh, well. Brian? Yes? I'm getting a little tripped up here on question two. I don't know if I should be getting tripped up, but I am getting <laughs> Question two on the assignment or on the... Uh... On the assignment, yeah. Hang on, sorry. Let me, let me turn to that one. Do you... Can you just give, can you, I, I know you can't give the answer or you can, but is it in, I'm getting something 432, is that right? Okay, so you broke down 48, 162, and 27, you did your uh, multiples, 
And then because you're looking for least common multiple, you, you found that you took the greatest of them all, right? Yeah. Right? And what did you end up with? 432. Let me look here. Uh, no, it's bigger than that. Okay, well, I'm, I'm lost then. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at it. So where's my, I need a piece of paper. There we go. <laughs> Wow, that's fine. Uh, the first one was 48. So what did you did 48 and you did prime factorization. Here, give me one sec. Let me do this real quick. Six, two, three. What did you end up with 48? What was your prime factorization? I have two and 24. Yeah, just give me give me the final numbers. Give me all the prime numbers. Oh, um, two, 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 and three. So two to the four times three, is that correct? Two to the four times yeah. three? Yeah. yeah. That one's correct. What about 162? Let's do that one. 162, give me a sec. Oh God, 81, uh, two, three, work. three works. Three works, what's that? Three and uh, three goes in 21, 27, is that right? Yeah, three and 27. And then uh, three and nine, and then three and three. Give me the prime factor for that one. What'd you get? I get two, two, three, three. For 162? Two, two, three, three. That's not, hang on. Did I do this wrong? Give me a check. Let me check. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Three goes in. Yeah, it has to go in because 81, if you add eight and one, that's divisible by three because that's nine. Okay, so three and what's that? Three and 27, 27, three and nine. Double check that one, 162. Double check your 162 again. Okay. I think that's the issue. Yeah, that's your issue there. I have a question. Hang on one sec. Sorry, just give me a sec. One sec, Alice. So I have uh, two times 81 is 162, and then I went down two times nine is 81. No. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's where you made your mistake on your prime factorization. So that should fix your overall answer. All right. I'm on it. Okay. Uh, Alice, what was your question? I forgot how to do the, the divisors. How do I get the divisors of 136 and 102? I can do one with, and I can then. Uh, which question are you on? Sorry. The same one. I did a prime factorization for 136, but now I should do the, the divisors. And I forgot what it means. Uh, which, sorry, I don't know which question you're on again. I, I've already forgotten which question. I'm on question 13. I'm on question 13B now. Oh, sorry, 13. Okay. Uh, determine the prime factorization of 136. So 136, you need to break down on the factor tree, right? Yeah. So let's let's do that. Let's see what we get here. Let me get another piece of paper. So 136, if you break it down, is going to be... Two and 68. 68. Yeah. And then 68 breaks down to two and 34. Yeah. Yeah. And then 34 breaks down to two and 17. Yeah. Okay. We're done. So 136 is you have, you end up with two times two times two times 17. Or what did we have? Two to the three times 17 to the one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what was, and the other one was 102. Yeah. So, so 102 breaks down to 2 and 51. 51 breaks down to 3 and 17. Yes. Yeah, okay. So then we end up with 2 times 3 times 17. Right? Or if we shorten it up, 2 to the 1 times 3 to the 1 times 17 to the 1. Yes. Okay, now, you have to remember before we do any, before we do GCDs, before we do GCDs, we have to balance everything. So we have a two to the three 
and we have a two to the one. Perfect. They balance because we both have twos. We have a 17 to the one and a 17 to the one. Perfect. Those balance. But the bottom one has a three to the one. What do we have to add to the 136 then to balance it? Three to the? Zero. Zero. Perfect. Now we're looking for GCDs. So we're looking for the lowest one of them all. So I got a two to the one and a two to the three. Which one am I going to use? GCD is the lowest. Two to the one. Two to the one. I have a three to the zero and a three to the one. Which one am I going to use? Three to the zero. And I, well, I have a, both I have a 17 to the one and a 17 to the one. So I got to both, both use a 17. Okay. So three to the zero is just one. Two to the one is one and seven. So what's two times 17? Um, I don't know. Um, 34. 34. That is your GCD in this case. 136 is divisible by 34 and 102 is divisible by 34. And that's so the biggest. So this is the GCD. Gre greatest common divisor. Divisor. So oh. what you're looking for that the 34, I can use it as a divisor, which means 136, I can divide by 34 and 102, I can divide by 34. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. You guys misbehave, I might have to pull out my foam of discipline. <laughs> it normally sits behind me up there. <laughs> uh, you want to check my number again? Sure, I can even pull out the skull if you want to. I got lots of stuff back there. <laughs> <laughs> I have a... Uh... I have 1296 now for number two on the assignment. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hmm, I don't know if that's right or not. <laughs> All right, I can move on finally. That was not holding you back, I hope, so. No, I was, uh, it's just, um, I have one of those brains where it just, I have to know the correct answer. <laughs> Uh, that's actually part about being a teacher. We're all obsessive in that way. It's, it's part of being a teacher. You got to trust me on that one. Not like um, um, Big Bang Theory, not like Sheldon obsessive, but yeah, there's some obsessive with being a teacher. It's part of it, right? You want to know, you want to do things right. You always want to get the right answer. You always want to do things correctly. It's a good thing to have, but you gotta, you'll have to add some flexibility as you become a teacher, because not all kids are like that, right?
Ryan, when they're all prime numbers, do I have to put like in the diagram the one times 11? Which, which question, sorry? For number three, like to show you how I did it. Of uh, the questions or the assignment? The assignment. Sorry, thank you. I was looking at the books, so I was looking at the oh, questions. No. no, no, sorry. Well, you could, you could do it either way, right? I mean, for instance, you could do it like five, like multiples. You could put in brackets, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, right? Um, same with the nine, right? To do the least common multiples in that. Or you could do it, probably the easiest way is to prime factorization, prime factor both, and then pick the lowest ones for the GCDs and the highest ones for the LCMs. I mean, it really doesn't matter how you show me as long as you get the answer. Okay. Uh, see that one you got to decide are you are you trying to find the lcm or are you trying to find the gcd kind of a neat question that one i like that one For question 15, question one on page 203 in the textbook. Two oh three. Hang on, 203? Yeah. Uh, which question, sorry? Question one. Question one. Oh, all they're asking is like, for instance, 684, is it divisible by two? Yes, that's why there's a check mark. Is it divisible by three? Yeah, it's a check mark, right? So if it's a check mark, it's divisible by that number. If it's an X, it's not. Now, you could try to remember the divisi divisibility rules, or you could just use your calculator. Either one's fine, right? Yes, you don't have a rule for six, so I was wondering. I didn't think of. Did we not have one for six? Hang on, let me, I can't, I can't remember. Find one for six. Give me a sec. Which one am I in here? 4.1? That's the one I want. Where's my rules? The rules are in six. Oh, yeah, here. They're in this one. Divisible by two, five, and ten. Four, eight, and two. Three, and nine. Oh, there might not be one by six. There it is. A divisibility test for six. Uh, <laughs> if, if the number is divisible by two and by three, then the number is divisible by six. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's on page 200 if you want to see it. But really, you don't need to worry about that. Just use your calculator and figure it out. Just hit it, go divide it by six. Like I said, the rules are nice, but they're not the be all end all, right? Because with technology, right, we can do all that, right? You just take, grab your calculator and plug it in. But it might speed things up if you know them. You know, if you go to a party, well, I can't go to a party because of COVID. But I mean, you could impress people by saying, hey, did you, did you know this number is divisible by that? You can impress people and see what they think. They're either going to throw you out of the party or they'll be impressed, one of the two.
Is nine a prime number? Say that again, please. Nine. Here's the deal. Think about when you're trying to figure out if it's a prime number, what are the factors? What are the numbers that get you that? So nine could have one and nine, but it could also have three and three. So then it, if, because it has more than two, right? Then it's not a prime, it's a composite, right? If it only has the two, like, if, like a seven, right? A seven only has one and seven. That's it. That's a prime number. Five, five and one. Six is not because it could either be one and six or two and three. As soon as you get a composite, you don't get that prime anymore. One of the activities we're going to do like almost right away is I'm going to make you practice what prime numbers are. And it's a puzzle. You'll see it's, well, what, like here, let me stop sharing that. Give me a sec here. It's. Yes, I've got them bring. Uh, share, share the screen. I want this one. Share. What we're going to do, you can see right away, Prime number sequence maze. It's right here on our, the things we're going to do. And you'll see it's just a little puzzle, but it's prime numbers. But actually, before that, we may actually do this, which is the prime factorization. This is really useful if you want lots of practice. But that's coming up in a sec here. We'll only need uh, maybe 10 minutes to do this, these ones here. So I just want to give you as much time practicing stuff. Um, could you go over that part where you got that uh, lowest common multiple for those two numbers you had? The the ones we did okay. in the yeah, yeah. I'm just in the because I wanted to see how you did that again. Not a problem. Give me one sec. Let me find it here. Sorry, I my I just saw my baby's here with me and he's kind of I had to step away for a bit. That's okay. That, that, that's 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 part of what it is now, right? Because you're at home. I mean, you, you not only have to deal with your education, you got your family too, right? And that, that always comes first anyway, so you know that. Uh, let's see. So, I, oh, I guess I, I need to share the right screen here. Hang on, sorry. Give me a sec, share screen, not this one. So when we did the, I don't know if you were here for this, when we did the 2250, right? We prime factored, and that's what this little tree is, right? Two and one, one, two, five. We just kept working our way down until we had all prime numbers. What? It's broken. Okay, were so you, you were so there those, for you were there for so that. Those prime numbers, like, sorry, hang on. See, my baby's like kind of a pass. So the two, like, you just have to write how many times the two shows up. So if I have four twos, then I just write two to the power of four. Right. So in this case, we only had like, if you look right here on the screen, we only had one, two. So it's two to the one, but we had two, three. So it's three to the two and we had three, five. So then it's five to the three. Okay. Okay. So, so like, how would you find their, their uh, lowest common multiple? Like do you times them or something? No, no. Hang on a sec. Okay. So let me stop sharing this. Let me go back to the example we did, which was uh, this one here. Give me one sec. Share. Let's go back to the screen. I want this one and share. So this was the example we did here, but let's back up. So you said LCMs, right? Yeah. Okay. So LCMs, if you look, so there's our 2250, which was a two to the one, a three to the two and a five to the three. We just did that on the other screen. So then we do the same thing for 2835. Right, we do our prime factorization, which is our tree, and we end up with three to the four, five to the one, seven to the zero, oh, yeah. seven to the one, sorry, seven to the one. Now, the next step is you got to rewrite it so everything is in balance. So if you look in this first one, we have a two, but there's no two in the second one. So that's why we need to add one. So on our first one, it's a two to the one, and our second one, we have to add in that zero. Because if we yeah. add two to the zero, that's just like adding a one, and it doesn't change the number at all. Okay. Okay, so then we had a three to the two here and we had a three to the four. Those are okay because we got threes. Then we had a five to the three and a five to the one. That was okay. Here's the other one. We're missing a seven though, right? We have a seven in the second one, but we don't have a seven in the first one. So we have to add in a seven to the zero and a seven to the one. Okay. okay. Now with LCMs, as opposed to GCDs, if you remember GCDs, 
we always look for the smallest one. So if we had a two to the one and a two to the zero, we would use the two to the zero. That's for GCDs. With LCMs, you're looking for the biggest one. Okay. So it, we have a two to the one and a two to the zero. We're going to use two to the one. Okay. We have a three to the two and a three to the four. We're going to use the three to the four. <laughs> we have a five to the three and a five to the one. We're going to use the five to the three. And we have a seven to the zero and a seven to the one. We're going to use the seven to the one. And that's what we use here. Two to the one, three to the four, five to the three. Now, to get that final answer, you have to multiply everything, right? Okay. So two to the one is two, but three to the four, right? Three times three is nine times. That's going to be 81 right there, right? Okay. Five to the three is 125 and seven to the one is seven. And then if you multiply that, you get that big massive number there. Oh, okay. Okay. Whereas opposed to GCDs, you look for the smallest one. LCMs, you look for the largest one. Okay. I get it now. Thank you. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Yeah, go, it makes sense. Okay. Thanks. thanks. You're welcome. So we always have to add them up or multiply them together. Do you need to multiply? Were you asking if you need to multiply them? Yes, always. Look, dot, dot, dot. Always a dot. Always. Multiplication. Because, hey, um, think about you got to think about it this way. What are we doing? We're finding factors, right? And anytime you see the word factors, it's always multiplication, right? Always. So, for instance, if I asked you for six and what are the factors, I'm looking at one and six multiplied together, give us a six, or two and three multiplied, give us six. So the word factors always means multiplication. Oh, sorry. Sorry, unmute yourself again. Sorry. Um, on question one on page 12 in the textbook, I don't know why I'm not getting the right answer. I'm missing something on 1B. Two, 212? Two 1B. One. One so 14 and 22. Yes. Okay. So for, let's prime factorization 14. So you end up with what? 2 and 7, right? Yes. Uh, 22, you end up with 2 and 11. Yes. Okay. Now, remember, you have to balance everything out. So the first one's good for the 11 is going to be 2 to the 1 times 7 to the 1 times 11 to the 0. Mm -hmm. The next one's going to be 2 to the 1 times 7 to the 0 times 11 to the 1. So it's greatest common divisor. So I pick the smallest. The smallest. So you have a two to the one and a two to the one. So you're going to pick a two to the one. You have a seven to the zero and a seven to the one. So you're going to pick the seven to the zero. And you're going to pick 11 to the zero. So your GCD is going to be? Two? Two. Why didn't I multiply them together? You did. How? Two to the one is two. 7 to the 0 is 1. 11 to the 0 is 1. 2 times 1 times 1 is 2. Why 1 times 1? Oh, okay. Because they're, okay. they're the exponent 0, right? Okay, then how did you get 1 for 7? Oh. 7 to the 0. Sometimes 0 is 0. Your phone went off. <laughs> I don't know why seven and eleven are should be one. Okay, so go back. Do you, do you understand why we picked seven to the zero though? Yes, I do. Okay, so anything, anything to the power, anything with an exponent zero, is just one. Okay. Just, just write it down as a rule. I could, I could explain it mathematically. I could show you a big long chart, but it's just easier. So if I have 5,733,125 and I have an exponent of zero up there, the answer is one. Yeah. If, I have, if I have negative X in brackets, negative X in brackets to the exponent zero, the answer is one. If I have a Rubik's cube to the exponent zero, 
The answer is one. It doesn't make any difference. Anything to the exponent, zero is a one. Okay, I have another question. In the lecture, you want, like if there was like a seven and a one and a seven and a one, or was it a two and a three and a two and a three, you multiplied it together. When does this apply? You know what I mean? Like when we're talking about prime factorization or what, like the factor tree? Maybe it's, it was the prime power, well, that's prime factorization. Any of those, any prime, prime factorization is always, multiple because when, remember the word is factor, right? And as soon as you see the word factor, it's multiply. Maybe it was the, the multiples. Even, even with the multiples, it's the same. Oh yeah, multiples is multiplication also. But when you're doing LCMs, you're looking for the the um, uh, the highest. Sorry, I, I just drew a brain fart there. Yeah, you're looking for the highest one, right? But it's still multiplied. Okay. Okay, let's try some activities here. Let's give everybody a little break from their brain. So the activities, I don't know if you didn't print these off, you kind of you'll have to do it on the screen as best you can because it'll be a little trickier to do here. Uh, I want this one and I want this one. Okay, so what I got here is if you look on day six, I got four activities for you to do. Again, you can finish these ones if you want, but let's look at, let's do the first one here. Prime, I think this is the one I want to do. Okay. So this is a really neat activity. And what you got to do is you got to get the dinosaur. I know it's childish, but cut, cut me some slack. You got to get the dinosaur to the turkey dinner. So to do that, you are going to start and you're going to only go by prime numbers. And in this case, we're counting up for prime numbers. So if you look, the first number is two. So you'd circle a two, right? Then you go to the three. That's the next prime. Now, the next prime number after that going up is five okay so what i want you to do is go through the prime numbers and it's basically going to take you all the way around this maze until you actually get to the turkey okay now if you printed it off it's really easy you can just circle it if not try to do your best on the screen to follow your path okay try to try to get going up two three five you can see seven and keep going around all the way up until you get i think it might be somewhere over here on the bottom left hand corner and you're going to get to the turkey. Okay. I'll be back in about a minute or two. I just got to throw my recycling out there while you're doing that. So start at the beginning and try to get to that piece. Aren't they all prime numbers? No, they're not all prime numbers. I I sometimes have odd numbers and prime numbers mixed up. Well, what are the prime numbers? The first couple numbers. A prime number can only be a number that is divisible by itself and one. So like two, you can only do two um, divided by two and so you can get the answer one. So numbers like two, three, five, seven, eleven are prime numbers. I missed the instructions. What should we do? Try to get to the turkey. But how? Okay, so we start at the the T-Rex there, right? If I'm understanding this correctly. So by the T-Rex, which one is a prime number there? Two. Two. So go to the two. Going by the two, which one is a prime number? Is it three? 
Yes. So three is the next one. Which number by the three is a prime number of also? Uh, 79, 47, or five? So it is five. I'm teaching your class, Brian. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm listening. You're doing good. Keep going. Okay. Five, which one is a prime number? 37, 17, or seven? Seven. What about by the seven? 41, 29, or 11? 11. What about by the 11? 61, 23, 13. 13. 29, 83, 17. Okay, 17 and 19 is. Okay, I'll try to 17, figure it out. 19. You're, so you're going up by a small amount each time. Like there's no big jumps. Yeah. Okay, thanks. What well, should be in the order? Well, they're all prime numbers, starting at two, going up to just under 100. Oops. Oops. Why isn't that not working? Ah! <laughs> okay. Well, you can see the pattern there. Sorry, my screen's going wonky on me there. So you would start with one like that because though you can finish it off and when you get a chance, those prime numbers start at two and go slowly all the way up to, right? So the next one would be if we're drawing 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, 97, and then you're there, right? So you can see the pattern there. Sorry, I'm just hauling the circles around. So that one is something you would start on. You could give this to kids to see how, see how fast they could do it. And there's, uh, you could, there's worksheets like this. You can print them off anywhere. This is a great place, this worksheet worksheetworks.com. Um, if we step back here and look at the, oh, why is it all over my screen now? Crap. Oh, how do you turn off the ink? There's the ink there. Uh, where's the race? Is that a race? That's a racer. That's the one I want. Sorry. Ah, that's not erasing it. <laughs> oh, that's annoying. It's supposed to erase it. Okay, whatever, hang on, let me back up here. So let me go forward and backwards here. Okay, just ignore the dots on the circles on the screen. Okay, so on the next one, you could do the prime number maze. Now this is the, this is the same maze, you're doing prime numbers, but this one you're trying to get the, ignore the circles there, because those are from the other one here. Let me get them out of here. This one is a little different because the prime numbers don't go up by a nice number. They're just prime numbers are random. So it makes it a little bit harder to do. So you're gonna start at the ship and you gotta to get to the island. So like you'd go 23 and then 13. Well, 32 is not. So then you'd have to go 41 and then two, right? So it's a little different than the last one because that, like I said, you're not going progressively up through the prime numbers. They're just all over the place, a little bit harder. <coughs> so you gotta get from the boat to the island. It's another good one. Oh, we're running out of time. Hang on. Jeepers. So do that one if you want a little bit of practice. It's kind of fun. Um, the next one is these two here. And these are really, really useful if you're trying to teach prime factorization. Because what happens is it gives you everything laid out for it already. You see the circles and the squares. So if it's a circle, it's a prime number. If it's a square, it's a composite. And then you have to split it again. So this one, if we were to draw on here, and I'll go up on the screen and draw. Hopefully this works. 
right? So this first one would be like a two. So this one would be like a two and a nine, right? The nine is a composite and then that breaks down to a three and a three, right? So you can see right away, anytime it's a circle, then it's a prime number. Anything that's in a box is a composite, right? So if you want a little bit of practice on prime number factorization, yeah, you can do it this way, right? So this one would be like two and 40, right? And then two and 20, and then two and 10, and then two and five, right? So everything in the circle is a prime, everything in a box is a composite. Now, again, when you're doing these questions, you can break them down to whatever factors you want, as long as you end up with prime numbers at the end. Is that making sense, those ones? Yeah. It's good practice. So if you're really struggling with prime factorization, do a couple of these. Oh crap, classes are, uh, I tell you, we need, we need like five hour classes. Do you think, do you think if I ask Pent, do you think they'd switch it to a five hour class a night? <laughs> no, nobody would show up, but <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, so take a few minutes and maybe look at those things. Oh, somebody has a somebody somebody has a comment in chat. Who is it? Sam? No, yeah, okay, that's that, you know Sam. I think that's what everybody would think. Sorry, you may <laughs> you may you guys may find this the class is kind of boring. I know it's math and it's it's remote. It's hard, but I'm really enjoying them. I don't know about you, but I'm really enjoying classes, <laughs> mostly because I love math so much. I know it's harder on the other end as you're being a student and you got to like listen and try to keep focused and all. Uh, it's tough. I know. I know. Okay. So a couple of things I just want to talk about just at the end and we, we I'll stay on to it because I'm going to stop the recording in a minute and set that uh, and set that to doing its compiling. Um, a couple of things on, oh, I guess this, that's, this was the screen I wanted. Never mind. I just took it off and I wanted that screen. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, let me put that back on there. Uh... Oh, no, no, I didn't want that. Sorry, sorry. Hang on one sec. Sorry, I just stopped myself and then I did it wrong. Hey, when I do that, there we go. Share screen. Okay. So a couple things. Um, if you get time, like tonight or tomorrow, if you look like, for instance, tomorrow is day, I know there's numbers all over the place here. Tomorrow is day seven. But if you look, like if you wanted to print, like look at day seven here, and we're going to do this opening activity, which is NumSquare, right? If you get a chance, print it off. It's way easier to do if you actually have a physical paper copy in front of you, okay? And if you want, print a couple of them off because this is a puzzle. If you get time. If not, you got to do it, look at it, the screen, and then it's just, it gets a little more complicated. And for instance, we're going to do um, uh, colored chip model activity. So if you click on that, right, you could print this off ahead of time too. If not, it's not a big deal because I'm gonna go over it with you. But it, 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 you gotta kind of look ahead for what we're doing. Like on Thursday, a weird will, I would print that off. Uh, like here, we're gonna, do, we're gonna do a fall fraction words on Thursday. It's a puzzle. You might wanna print it off if you have access to it, just to make your life a little bit easier, okay? Okay. So. We are done class, but I will stay on a bit if you have questions, but let me, let me stop the recording right away. So then uh, it'll start processing its thing for, uh, who was it that needed it? Alice, oh no, but Alice stayed on anyway, so never mind. So let me, uh, hang on, stop sharing.